One Percenter Podcast with Sam Bakhtiar, bringing you the one percent knowledge to help you reach your full potential. Learn what it takes to rise above the 99 percent and become a one percenter. Hey, what's going on? It's Sam Bakhtiar, the host of One Percent Podcast, and today I have a very special guest who have literally changed her life in one year. Actually, less than that, like, you know, five months, six months. Yeah, pretty much. Because Jessica, six month, in six months, she's lost about 67 pounds mm-hmm. and got off blood pressure medication. Yes. Right? Blood, blood, blood yeah, medication. my blood pressure is regular now. No, no high readings. <laughs> Are not depressed anymore? You're going through depression and now you, you, you're yeah, good? Yeah, well, I'm working through that. I won't say I'm like 100% healed because, you know, that's something you just continually work on. But I'm more receptive to the therapy that I receive now. That's, you know, and, and then what else has happened in this, in this short month? Because, I mean, I'm looking at your bio. You know what I mean? I, I'm, this, I mean, this is your before and after picture. Yeah. Look at this. Let's zoom in on this like now. <laughs> Right? I'm just kidding. You know, you, in, in 18 weeks, you lost 66.3 pounds. Mm-hmm. And look, Jessica, on the left, when you started, you literally are looking like 20 years older. Do you agree oh, with that? Oh, no, I know. I looked much older. Mm-hmm. My face was fuller. I mean, and I, I wore my depression on my face, you know. Uh, the way I treated myself was the way I thought of myself at the time. And it wasn't a lot of good feelings. <laughs> so let's, let's talk about the beginning. You yeah. know, because I read your bio and yeah. you said that, you know, you kind of battled, you know, being overweight pretty much, you know, from the beginning. Yeah. So tell me when that started. Uh, back in middle school, you know, I hit puberty and hormones or whatever, plus never really knowing how to eat correctly. Like my parent, my <laughs> mother would make m- meals for me and stuff like that. But, oh, I'd rather go to McDonald's across the street. What is up with McDonald's? Because you, you, you order number three all the time. I want to talk about that. I don't want to stop you, man. Because I'm like, because like, like, I mean, we're in California, man. I'll be going in and out, but McDonald's is your thing. We'll talk about that. So, 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 okay, so go ahead. Yeah, so that was my addiction, you know? Like, I loved fast food. Like, it was, it was literally right across the street from my mm-hmm. middle school. My mm-hmm. friends and I, we'd walk over there, get a couple burgers, you know, fries. Like, yeah. that's what I was used to eating, and that's what I enjoyed, and I didn't like working out. Oh, they made me run the mile in, in middle school. Oh, was, I was, was like lagging behind all the time. I don't think time. anybody like, you know, loves working out because working out is like a little pain. It's something like you, yeah. you learn to enjoy over time. Yeah, exactly. But it was like getting to that point. Yeah, yeah. And I just never had it in me to yeah. get to that point. I was like, oh, working, like, you know, you have to take PE for school. And you're like, well, why do I need to do this? Why am I being graded on this? Yeah. You know, I thought education is important. You know, so anyway. So, so growing up, like, you know, in the middle school, you had puberty, you started gaining yeah. weight, you know, eating fast food yeah you know how was that with around other kids because I know kids can oh, be really were cruel. nice to me and as you can see I'm a tall girl I'm 5'8 at the time I was maybe like 5'5 five, five. Um, so I was taller than everybody and I was fatter so everyone picked on me because I was the big girl and it always made me feel very out of place what was and what was some of the word they said what uh, the words they used word I mean because I know, like, when they picked on me, I know exactly, I remember the exact word. Word, the one thing I remember, but it had more to do with my height. And at the time when I was in middle school, the Twin Towers incident yeah. had just happened. So me and my friend were both tall. And the girl was, like, maybe an inch taller than me, like how one of the towers were taller. Oh. And they're like, oh, watch out, that plane's coming. Oh, God. That one stuck with me. And then I guess because I had a fuller face... I ended up getting the nickname Big Head. <laughs> yeah, Big Head, yeah. Um, and then one time I tripped, and, I, and so they came up with a very creative, clumsy Big Head. So I, I was teased, and because I was teased, I used eating as a coping mechanism. And, of course, that always leads to gaining weight and health issues and all of that stuff. I did end up losing weight when I went into high school because yeah, I, I was walking. Yeah, so, so, yeah, I saw that on your bio, yeah. and I want to talk about that, right? Mm-hmm. So... When you went to high school, you were walking like two miles to school, right? Yeah. Is that what yeah. it was? It's about two miles? Yeah, about that. Yeah, about two miles. And then you start losing weight. And you, and, and you said you became your thinnest. Yeah. I, okay. I weighed like what? I think I was pretty much at my, my current height, 5'7", 5'7", 5'8", and uh, I weighed like 137. So 
you didn't change nothing with your diet. No. You know, you still were eating McDonald's and stuff. That all you did was walk two miles. Yeah. And you were losing weight at yeah, that time. Was Gosh, right. that is pretty good, man. That is amazing. You know, that, that, that is pretty good. That because, already you know tells me? you. I will, I will walk two miles every day <laughs> if I can eat McDonald's course, all the time. Of course, I was younger, you know. Yeah, that's what I'm younger, saying. Your metabolism I mean, faster. And Gosh, you, I'll, I'll walk two miles every day if I can eat number three. Oh, uh, yeah, you exactly. <laughs> no, I stay away from it. It's dangerous. That's danger territory for me now. So, but anyway, um, but then the minute I started driving... Then all that stuff came and back. Then, you were uh, active. And then you know I didn't like working out, so that yeah. wasn't happening. So I. So you didn't. So there's you have two whammies right now, right? You had, you didn't like working out, mm. and you love fast food. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's yeah. that that's a recipe for yeah. disaster, and that, right? And that's what it kind of gave me. You know, in that ten minutes that I was eating it, that gave me the joy that I was looking for because I wasn't getting it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. So I looked forward to those meals. But, you know, later on, it, it almost started becoming shameful because yeah. what I would do is I would leave the house because I, you know, I lived with my parents and I mean, I was an adult, but I lived with my parents and I would leave the house like at 10 p.m. and I'd go to the McDonald's or I'd go to the Tommy's and then I'd go sit on a dark street and eat by myself. And then I would throw away the evidence right away. But I wouldn't throw it in our trash can. I would throw it in somebody else's trash can. So, so nobody, nobody, yeah, nobody see. Gosh. Yeah. Because it became shameful because I knew what I was doing to myself and yeah. doctors were telling me you have high blood pressure like and how old were you when you had high blood pressure? I think I was like 25, 26. So you're 25, 26, yeah. you know, you now you have high blood, high blood pressure, you're pre-diabetic. Yeah, they were starting to throw that word at me, which is something I had heard like maybe 10 years prior with my mom because my mm -hmm. mom has had health issues. And now you're like, man, I'm almost like, I'm like my mom. I'm age turning now. into my mom. Yeah, yeah. And I love my mom dearly, but you know, those health issues that I see her struggle with, I don't want you don't that. Want that. You don't want yeah. that. You know, so, you know, so you're like, okay, did you ever say, you know what, now I got to do something about it. Let me join a gym. I did, you know, early on when I was 18 yeah. and I had money now, you know, I was working a part-time job or whatever. I'm an adult. Uh, I ended up getting a gym membership with Bally's. Okay, Bally's, yeah. I went the day I signed up and I never went back again. <laughs> so you went and, and, and how, and and how long was, was this three, contract? Three year contract. So you paid for three years yeah, and you, yeah. you, you, you just signed up and never went? Because it was just so intimidating walking in there and not really having any guidance. And if you want a private trainer, you have to put more money towards that. And I didn't, I didn't have the money for that, obviously. You know, kid in college working a part-time job. So... That, that, you know what, that's a, you know... That's a shame that, not, 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 not to you, mm -hmm. that's a shame on Bally's that they signed you up and they, they never called you to go? Mm -mm. The only time they called me was when my payments were in default. Damn, I hate that. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, they're like, like oh, your like, payment didn't go through. See, that's exactly, <laughs> hey, that is exactly my beef with the big box gyms right now. And that's yeah. why all these boutique gyms right now are coming, are coming so good because look, you were just a fucking transaction. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? No, I, 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 this, is, this is my pet peeve. You know what I mean? This and that. Yeah. So that means, here's exactly what happened, right? You paid, you know, they never checked for you to even you gone or not. Did you ever use the facility? Hey, Jessica, you mm -hmm. know, you know, we haven't seen you here ever mm -hmm. since you signed up. What's up? Can you come in? Yeah. Let's, let's talk. Let's get you on a treadmill. No, you know, you, you know, the only time is when your credit card information changed. Exactly. You know what I mean? And all of a sudden they can't get their monthly payment. Mm -hmm. They just called you. And that's why that's going to be the death of the big gyms. And that's why all the smaller gyms right now mm -hmm. who actually care about people, exactly. who actually want to get people results, yes. you know, and that's why when you came and did the camp on our agreement says you have to be there five days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to be there five days. We don't want you to sign up and not show up. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to go there and not get results. We don't want that because mm -hmm. here's what we don't what we want. You are right now, whether you like it or not, are walking, talking advertisement. You know what I mean? Yeah. I and, that, and, and, and you are right now, you know, people are going, hey, Jessica, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. I go to the camp. Mm -hmm. And for people who own, you know, small business, you know, gyms or whatever it is, you want to make sure that you have raving fans, loyal clients, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the difference between a loyal client and a satisfied client, a satisfied client is satisfied with you till something better comes along. Mm -hmm. A loyal client loves you for what you have done for them, mm -hmm. you know, and not only that you've gone to the camp and, and you lost this way, you changed your life, now you actually work at the camp. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I love it. That's badass. And, and this is not an advertisement for the camp. I don't want this to be like no, a, no, no. a camp advertisement mm -hmm. and stuff like that. This is advertisement about customer service, mm -hmm. about getting your customer results and just going the extra mile for mm -hmm. them. 
You know what I mean? And this is yeah. this is what never happens. And when you just said that, you know, th this is my pet peeve. Mm -hmm. Pet mm -hmm. peeve that you paid for three years. Nobody ever called you to go use the gym. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you change your credit card information, mm -hmm. you know, and next thing you know, they're calling you, hey, you know, your credit, you know, you're, that is bullshit. Yeah, I know. I know. You know, that is bullshit. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so now, you know, you know, you saw our advertisement and all that kind of stuff and you still procrastinated. Well, like I said, I mean, working out, like that's just... At a certain point, I think it came to an acceptance in my head that, okay, this is who I am. This is who, how I'm supposed to be. How can you have an acceptance at 26, 27 years old that it this is was, how I'm going to be, man? It, was, be the, it was the depression and the anxiety yeah, talking. Yeah. Because, you know, to get to the camp, you have to talk to people. You have to introduce yourself. You have to... You know, that All of that's This right now, what's happening right here, would have never happened a year ago. I would have never contacted you guys and said, hey, yeah, I'll come in for an interview. That's, that was so unlike me. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you changed. No, and you I'm know, because so I, I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> sitting here and I don't want to dive into this topic if you don't want to, mm -hmm. you know, um, but I'm sitting here in front of a very beautiful, mm -hmm. confident woman. Thank you. You know, you walked in, you know, I'm like, wow, she's beautiful. She has a nice body. You, you, you are very eloquent. You know, you, you talk very well. So why, you know, wh where did the anxiety and depression come? Because I'm looking at you, you, you look very confident. I don't see any anxiety or I don't, I, I don't see it. I, I mean, obviously, that so much. Ob obviously, <laughs> obviously, like, I don't know, obviously, I don't know everything. Just yeah. the little bit that I see on the surface, mm -hmm. you know, you carry yourself very well. Thank you know what I mean? So can, can we talk about that if you want? I mean, I think it's just something in middle school, like I said, when it just shifted, because when I was in elementary school, I was fine for the most part. I mean, I know that my upbringing, there were some chaotic moments. I mean, we all have that. And we all have that. And, and I, you know, I don't sit there and victim yeah. shame, you know, yeah, victim, yeah, yeah, yeah. or victimize myself yeah. is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but I think when I got into middle school, things kind of just changed yeah. and I changed and I wasn't liking what I was becoming, but I didn't know how to be anything else. Yeah. I didn't think I could be anything else. Yeah. I figured, you know, like happy people are happy and sad people are sad and there's just, there's that divide and yeah. there's no way to, to cross to the other side, you yeah. know? Do you think some of the name calling and some of the shaming will have something to do with it? Oh yeah, okay. definitely. Definitely. I mean, I mean, look, you know, Jess, I, I remember when I came to America and I was 11 years old, mm -hmm. I don't know if you know my story, I'm gonna go to, you know, I came to Sharon, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I thought I was coming to Beverly Hills because that's what I saw on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, when I came to school, I was the only minority in that school. I didn't speak English. I was short, you know, I'm um, still short, obviously, you know, I, you know, short, you know, I was skinny. I didn't, you know, I, you know, I didn't know the American sports, mm -hmm. you know, and I tried for the basketball team, I got cut. Long story short, I, I, I've been beat up, I've been bullied. I've been calling all kinds of names, you know, everything you can think of because, you know, in, in a homogeneous population still, you know, Sharon, Pennsylvania, I was the only minority in school, mm -hmm. you know, but I think that just made me into a whole new beast. You know, that, you know, I use that as like, you know what, F you, I'm going to fucking prove you wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, I'm going to show you what I can do. You know, I'm going to show you that I'm not this and I'm not that and all that kind of stuff and be able to do that. And I want you to do the same because, and I actually, you're doing it. You're doing it right now. You know, you got out of that, you know, you went in there in the camp in, in 18 weeks, you're like 67 pounds. You fucking look amazing. You look amazing and you're Thank confident. You. you know, I don't want any people in the past hold you back. What, you know what, Here, here's what I want to tell you. What's happened in the past is the past. All that matters right now, here's all that matters right now, is where you are, which you're 28 years old, right? 29. 20, oh gosh, you're going old now. You know I mean? <laughs> Almost 30, I mean, oh you know my God. Know, oh my God. So, no, you're, so you're 29. Right? Yeah. All that matters right now is where you at right now, where you want to go, and the price you're willing to pay for it. Right? Mm -hmm. Before, you knew where you at, you knew where you want to go, but you weren't willing to pay the price. Oh, let me get exercise and let me give up McDonald's. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But you know, at, at one point, something happened, and I think it was that picture somebody took of you and your mom, right? You know? Yeah, it was at, my at, at, 28th at, birthday. At Aladdin, as a matter of fact, I, I saw that. Yeah. I was there. I was there with my daughters. Oh, were you? Yeah, I was there. Great. I yeah. love it. Yeah. Oh, my God, what a great, you know what I mean? So you, you, pick, you, you took that picture. I think that triggered you. Oh, yeah. I said, you know what? You know, you know I got to do something about it. And, and here's what happens with, with when we go for a change. Because remember, change is hard. People don't like to change, oh, know. You, know, you know, change it means that you gotta live, you know, give up your comfort zone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And your comfort zone was not working out, you didn't make the answer to do what you wanna do. Mm -hmm. But change happens 
when the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of change. Basically, when you say, you know what, I'm fucking sick and tired of being sick and tired. I got to fucking do something about this. I'm not going to look like this. I'm not going to feel like this anymore. I don't like the way I look. Gosh, you know, I look older than my mom. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's probably some, you know, yeah. you know, you know oh, things yeah. that, you know, you know oh, things yeah. that came to your, you know, came, came to yeah. your mind. And then you made the change, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where you are. And I'm so glad you did because, you know, so, so many people don't do it. Oh, I know. And then they go to all their life miserable, mm -hmm. avoid social gatherings, Avoid going anywhere, hide behind the camera, you know, you don't want to go, go to the mall, don't want to go to the bishop, don't want to go to barbecue, don't want to come to family reunion, you know, you know, and next thing you know, they're, they're just kind of like, you know, they got that permanent frown on their face. Mm -hmm. And you're much too young for that, you're much too pretty for that, and you got, you know, you know, you know I, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. Thank you so I'm much. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Okay, so you went to the camp, you went, you know, you went, you went and got started on camp, you know, you know, you didn't like exercising. Mm -hmm. What changed all of a sudden? Like, well, what, what happened that was different this time that you all of a sudden, like, okay, well, I actually like it or maybe I can actually do this? I think when I walked in there and I saw so many other people in the same boat as me and I yes. knew I was alone. Yes, yes. <laughs> the community, everything. the community is yeah. the most important thing. You know, mm -hmm. research shows that the two biggest weight loss factors is not exercise and nutrition, mm -hmm. it's the support in the community. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's the supporting Most community. Definitely. Most people are always oh, exercise and nutrition. Look, man, you know, you know, you know, we have a pretty, pretty awesome training and pretty awesome nutrition program, mm -hmm. but so there's other people. Mm -hmm. There's other people that have great, you know, training program and nutrition program. Mm -hmm. You know, what really makes the difference is you see your peers there doing it. Mm -hmm. When you see people like you that has done it in the past, they can say, hey, I've done it. I was just like you and I've, I'm you know, doing it. You can do it too. Mm -hmm. So when you went, I'm sure the first day you were sore as hell. Cause I oh, I, I had to step outside because I thought I was going to throw up my breakfast. <laughs> it was so bad. But yeah, I was sore. I was sick. But I was like, okay, l let me take this one day out of time. Because yeah. at first I was like looking at the bigger picture yeah. and it was starting to get a little overwhelming. But I was like, yeah. you know what? One day at a time. It's going to get easier, yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, I ended up falling in love with it. I love the way it's set up. I love the people that I've met. I, I've made a lot of everlasting friendships. Yeah. Um, I've done three Spartan race, four Spartan races What? Now whoa, whoa, these. whoa, whoa, hold on. That did, you <laughs> you yeah. did not tell me that. Oh, I think it was in there. It wasn't in there? Yeah. Okay, so so you you went from not <laughs> wanting to any exercise to now you're going to have a Spartan race? Yes, jumping over walls. Because that shit is hard. Carrying heavy buckets, like, you know, running long lengths. The last one I did was the one in Big Bear. It was like 12 and a half miles. Dude, like, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you know what? I'm like, what? You know, gosh, man, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So you've been doing this now for how long? When did you, when, when did you sign up for the first day? You know, uh, you know, how long have you been actually exercising on a regular basis? Since April 16th of 2018. 2018. So a little bit over a year. Yeah, a little bit over okay. a year. Okay. So you, you lost the weight. You maintained it. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the big question I want to ask you. Okay. A lot of people lose weight, gain weight, lose weight, gain weight, lose weight. You've done it in the past. Lose weight, mm -hmm. gain weight, lose yeah. weight, gain weight. What's going to not make you gain weight this time? What are you going to do? For you to stay like this for the rest of your life and i want you to be serious right because look anybody can you know i'm not impressed these days mm -hmm. with somebody who does something for a little while mm -hmm. i'm impressed with somebody who's always consistent mm -hmm. you know you know a lot of times we get calls all the time and say you know sam this person is killing it you know this person is killing at work this person is killing at the gym you know the first thing i ask for how long mm -hmm. you know if they're killing it for a little bit all right, well, come back to me when they're killing up for a few years. Yeah. And then they're, they're being killing up for a few yeah, years. Yeah, it's that consistency you know, that's you know, hard. What, what mechanism, what are you going to do to make sure you stay consistent for the rest of your life? Because you know what? Based on what you tell me and based on what I see on this picture, I don't like the old you. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but matter, matter, of fact, matter of fact, the old you probably never came to meet me. Right. You told me like you, you just didn't want to, you didn't want to be around people and all that. Kind of. mm -hmm. So what are you going to do to stay? Because this is your peak state. Mm -hmm. You're happy. You look good. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be around people. Mm -hmm. And this is what, what you're going to say. But what are you going to do to stay consistent? Uh, well, I'm staying with the camp. I mean, um, 
I work for the camp now. So mm -hmm. I, w I want to be a part of this program. I want to be a part of seeing other people change and influencing them. And in turn, they're influencing me to keep mm -hmm. going because I see the effect that I've had on people along the way. So I think what you're trying to tell me, you know, is you want to stay in close proximity. Yes. You know yes. what I mean? You want to be around that peers and mm -hmm. be around. Look, I mean, you know, they say that you are who you surround yourself with, mm -hmm. right? Very true. If you surround yourself with, you know, criminals are going to become criminals. Mm -hmm. If you surround yourself with people who are motivated and they want to lose weight and they want to look good and, and, and they want to be healthy, mm -hmm. you're going to be healthy. If you're going to, you know, surround yourself with people who just sit and complain and eat bad and then you're going to, you know, be a complainer and eat bad and, you know, you know be, get big. So you understand proximity is power, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So that's why you stay close to that thing, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I have a hint that, you know, if one day you're not working for the camp and you got a different career, you know, you're still going to come in and be around the same people and be in an environment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They said if you want to be a millionaire, you know, have millionaire friends. Mm -hmm. You know, be around that. Exactly. And, then that's, and that's exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, that, that is amazing, man. <laughs> that is amazing. So what is next for you? So you lost, you know, you know 67 pounds, mm -hmm. you know. You um, now doing Spartan races. Just figure, just, uh, <laughs> that, that, that's yeah. that's so impressive, man. That's so impressive. Because when I wonder when somebody tells me, I'm like, I'm not doing that. So, <laughs> and you know, you yeah. that's out of my comfort zone. Yeah. And you're 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 crushing it now with somebody who didn't even want to walk before. They didn't exactly. Step in the gym, I know, right? walking the dog. I you was like, mean? oh come on, why? <laughs> like you know? I hated it. <laughs> I mean, but, it, you know. So 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 what what is next? What is your next goal? Um, right now, I mean, I am a little bit in a crossroads in my life. Uh, I went to school for music for 10 years and I've, I'm continuing playing with my band. Uh, we're actually traveling up north this weekend to go mm -hmm. play in Humboldt. But, uh, you know, just trying to figure out how that kind of aligns with everything I've learned in the past year. Because at this point, I'm, I'm like inspiring people and like being a part of their journey. I don't know how that would fit into what I do or if I what or what I could possibly do outside of music but just being along and helping people on their journey I've become very gra like I gravitate towards that now. well absolutely I mean I mean you, you're automatically inspiring people whether you know it or not yeah you know you become an inspiration because there are people just like they inspired you mm -hmm. when exactly. you first went to them, yeah. and now you're inspiring them, and now they want guidance from you, they mm -hmm. want they want advice from you, mm -hmm. and you're now all of a sudden their their confidant, their coach, mm -hmm. you know, and, and things like that. Doesn't that make you feel good? Oh, it feels it feels amazing. Like the, just this past Monday was the start of the new challenge, and I had a friend from college and this uh, other lady who I actually signed up last weekend. And they were with me. We were in a group of four, and like we were, and they were looking toward to me for mm -hmm. help and guidance, and watching how I was doing the exercise, and you know, I was, you know, if they couldn't do it the way I was doing it, I was giving them other ways to mm -hmm. kind of accomplish something similar, and it just it fulfilled me. I felt so fulfilled that day, uh, being able to help them, and you know, on the beginning of their journey, because I remember my day one, yeah. and you know, I found a friend who I ended up gravitating towards, and kind of stuck by his side the whole way. And even after he passed his challenges, he helped me with my final challenge to get through it yeah. and pushed me. And so it's just, I've, I feel like I've never been around such good people and having such good, strong support in whatever I do. Like it, it's, it's just been kind of a miracle for me. And it is, it is, you know, you know, they say that when your success rubs off, on other people, mm -hmm. you know, that's the highest level of success that you can achieve. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's one thing that you're successful, but your success now inspires other people. Now your success now, you know, you know, helps other people. Now you're helping other people, mm -hmm. you know, and that's the ultimate form, you know, of success. You know what I mean? You know, so I, I, I want to congratulate you for that, you know, and it looks like, you know, just based on what I'm seeing in your facial expression, you know, every time I say, I say, you know, about you're helping people, you know, you light up. You know, you, I mean, you're, I don't know if you noticed it, you know, you know, you know, you know, you, you, know, you, 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 you really love helping people. I think I do, yeah. Yeah, I know really you do. do. No, you know I, do, you I do, do, I do, I do. You know, I, I don't know. think I've actually really expressed that as much as I have right now, but yeah. yeah no, I, but I you don't have to, I mean, your face lights up. <laughs> you know, your face lights up when, you know, I, my face lights up 
when you know when somebody talks about my daughter, they automatically is like, oh my god, like you yeah, know, somebody my daughter, 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 and I saw the same light up, you know, when 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 you're doing that, it looks like it fulfills your heart, you know, because it's such a dear thing to you, and you struggle with it for so long, mm -hmm. and now you're you know helping other people get out of their struggle, you know, help, awesome. helping other people. Um, you know, achieve what they didn't think it was possible. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that maybe, just maybe down the ride, you might want to look at career in the fitness industry. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because you have a story to tell. Yeah. You know, you have a story to tell. You have a story to be able to show people. Hey, man, I struggled. I wasn't this skinny girl. You know, born. I was struggling. This was my thing. This is what I struggled with. I struggled, and and people identify with that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you might be able to help thousands and thousands of people change their lives over the years. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, I know that's what I've done. That's what I've loved to do. Ever since four, I was 14 years old, you know, I didn't have the same struggles as you. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm be honest, you know, but I got bullied and I got, you know, made fun of and, and, and I just took it to the weight room. Mm -hmm. I got stronger, you know, and, 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 and what, you know, I got bigger and, and I'm like, you know what, you guys all counted me out. You know, people told me I couldn't become a, you know, they laughed when I said I'm going to become a bodybuilder. And I went and became a first bodybuilder to win the first place title in every single weight class, wow. you know. And so, you know, you know, use that mm -hmm. to fuel you. Use that to fuel you and 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 and, and catapult you uh, to the next step, mm -hmm. you know. Of course. Wow, man. I mean, gosh, you know. Let now I'm going to slide through some of these pictures. Yeah, of course. And I want you to tell me, you know, a little bit about these pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're just yeah. Just so this through the is, year, through the, this past year. This is this past year. You started. At 223? Yeah, 223. You started yeah. at 223, and then you went down in 18 weeks to 170 something? No, no, yeah, one. No, I was 156. One, 156, yep. yeah, 156, so 66.3 pounds. Just amazing. <laughs> and this is you playing in the band? Yeah, this is me playing with my bluegrass band, uh, Wicklow Atwater. Awesome. Yeah, and I mean, this is like the first picture that I saw of myself that I could tolerate looking at myself with the band. <laughs> look great. Yeah, no, I know. Uh, I don't even have the double chin because normally, you know, you have the violin up here, so my double chin would. Be, <laughs> I hated it. But yeah, that was the first picture. What is like, wow. what is your band thing about your transformation? Oh, they were all like shocked and proud of me, and they, they've seen me come along, and it, it just it helps in my performance. Like mm -hmm. I'll actually stand up, you know, put myself out there for solos and stuff like that because I'm not so ashamed of the way I look. Now, do you, do you crave fast food right now? Do you, do, do, do you every once in a while say, hey, you fast know what? Fast food? No, I, I cut it out. You cut it out? I cut it out completely, and I cut out soda completely. Got I it. just drink water Okay. for the most part. Okay. You know, sometimes juice or whatever. But okay. those are my, like, kryptonites, essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I realized, and, but I think because I spent whatever six months it was without that, it was like an addiction, and I was able to cut the addiction. Got it. So now I don't crave that. I do crave good food food like I still crave Mexican food of course so of course, course. I'll, I'll you know I, I do let myself indulge of but I course but you, yeah track absolutely well. absolutely yeah. you know you know you have to he, here's what you are now you are aware of mm -hmm. what food does and what how it how it affects your body mm -hmm. so you know exactly what to do exactly you know what I mean so yeah well, who are these and these okay so these are my parents and my boyfriend um, who I met actually this past year Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of my mother, my mother recently had three heart attacks in the past six months um, because she wasn't changing the way she ate. And it was a little bit of a frustration for me, especially when I was going through the challenges. She wasn't, I wanted her to pick up on it and I wanted her to do it with me. But I, I think at that point it was already a little too late. Is she okay? She's okay now. She's doing better now. They had to put in another stent, but she's doing better. Is and she? Is she Walking she's she's changing bit? the way she eats, um, but what I'm grateful for is that now I have the knowledge that I can be a little more helpful when it comes to those eating habits, yeah. you know, and if she says, she's like, she's a fast food junkie with me, so she'll, sometimes she'll ask, I'm like, no, like, I'll completely shut it down because I don't want her to be putting that kind of toxic stuff in her body anymore, you know. So let me ask you a difficult question. Okay. So, and I, wa I kind of wanted to ask you that, but I wasn't sure, but you just said something that said, she was a fast food junkie with me, right? Do you attribute, because they say that, you know, they're gonna, you know, kids don't do what you say, they do what you do. So growing up, having a mom that was a fast food junkie. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I think when I was the thing. This is mm -hmm. the thing is, is that she's ever since I was a kid, she's had uh, back problems. She had like three herniated discs. Like she was never able to be really active, but. Mm -hmm. She would cook. She cooked for a very long time. Okay. Okay. So, so you, she, she was. It wasn't like that. Okay. It wasn't until later on in my life. Like got it. Got it. Just, just, just want to make sure. Yeah. Because that she couldn't really get up and cook anymore. So it was like, okay, Jess, go to McDonald's. Got it. It's easier. Got it. Okay. You know, because I always sort of tell thing. parents, it, it really starts with them. Yeah. It really starts with of them. Of course. You know, and, and and all that. So you 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 uh, met your boyfriend a year ago. I actually met him the same day that I completed my first challenge. Wow. Yeah. So he saw you through the, through the other two so challenges? He's, yeah, he saw me through the other two challenges. That's and he's been awesome. With me. And he's lost like 20 or 30 pounds with me. That's awesome. So, so. he's very supportive. So he's he very you. supportive. And he was like very inspired by me. Yeah. And he wanted to lose the weight too. And so we're kind of working together on that now. But yeah, that's us. We're, we're Disneyland freaks. Awesome. <laughs> we're there like every weekend. That's awesome. Look Possibly at, be there tonight. God, you, guys, you guys look so good in the hair. You guys, <laughs> you guys are, look so good. So really quick, for people who are battling weight, battling self-doubt, you know, battling some form of depression, you know, and they think that, you know, like you said before, this is just how it's, I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. They're just giving up. The, you know, give, they want to give up. It's like they're, they're accepting defeat. Yeah. You know, you know, what do you have to say to them? You know, if, you know, what, what, what do you, what do you say to them? I mean, it's hard. It's a hard barrier to break. And I personally feel like the person has to be ready and open and receptive, even if they don't really believe that it's going to work or right off the bat to at least be open. But what I would say is just don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to step out of that comfort zone and, and don't be afraid to try something new that you haven't tried before because you can make that change. And I'm like living proof of that now because um, it's possible. As long as you put in that effort and you put in that time, anything is possible. You know, and those are just profound words. Don't be afraid, right? What is the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't work. Yeah. But if you go in with a positive attitude and willingness to change, it will change your life. It's changed yours. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's what we want to, you know, we want to put across as if you're watching this, you know, you know, d just go in and make a change. Change is hard. Nobody likes change. But without change, nothing's going to change. And change has to come from within you. Mm -hmm. You know, and like you said, you have to be willing to be open, mm -hmm. honest, and yeah. accept that. You know, and this is what's so rewarding for me. You know, just like it is rewarding for you. Mm -hmm. You know, ever since I was 14, I've been infatuated with transforming bodies. Mm -hmm. You know, and when I have, you know, people come through here, you know, and, you know, seen stories like you that my hobby is transformed so many people's lives. You know, I'm looking at you and how far you have come. You know, that's my biggest fulfillment. That's my biggest smile. You know, this and my children, you know, and I can tell you, man, Jessica, I'm so proud of you. You know, and if you want to make me proud, you know, you know, you know if you want to, to really, really make me, make me happy, I want you to stay with us. You know, I, I really want to stay this because, you know, I don't want this to be a, a, a phase. Mm -hmm. I want this to be forever. That was my biggest fear was yeah. that that's what it was going to end up being. The first day after my last challenge, I had uh, spaghetti. Yeah. It was my favorite meal. Mm -hmm. So my mom made it for me. And I freaked out afterwards because I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to gain it all back. Just with that one meal, yeah. I was already like, oh, my God. Yeah. But, you know, I learned but that's not how it works. Yeah. And as long as everything is in moderation yeah. and you're eating right, you know, 99% of the time, you know, you're going to be fine. You know what? You know, all it is is consistency. You know what I mean? And there's something called, you know, there's a book called The Compound Effect. Mm -hmm. You know, if you get a chance, I do want you to read it. You know, it basically says little things done correctly over time mm -hmm. will give you big results. Yeah. So, you know, over time, if you're exercising and eating better, you know, most of the time, it's going to give you best results. Nobody's going to be a cyborg and eat just broccoli, right? No. Of you know, not. <laughs> and 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 then and then, and, he, and here's what's happened before. Look, if you knew back then that if you get McDonald's number three, 
<laughs> right? Number three, no onions with the coke. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I didn't three, no, no onions with the coke, right? <laughs> with the coke, right? If you ate that one meal and you gained 40 pounds, you wouldn't do it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Nobody would eat, you know, number three, McDonald's, whatever their favorite meal is, you know, if they knew that they're going to gain 40 pounds the next day. Mm -hmm. But the problem is it doesn't show up right away. No. But the next thing you know, slowly but surely, it, it creeps, creeps up, up on you. Mm -hmm. That creeps up on you, so is good things. Yeah. You know, and that's why a lot of people quit exercising and quit eating good because they want things overnight, mm -hmm. right? Oh, well, you know, I eat good all day today and I, <laughs> and I went for a walk all day. You know, I went for a walk for an hour and I good all day today. God, I'm not down 10 pounds. This sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, just stick with it. You're not going to win every day. Mm -hmm. You're not going to win every battle, mm -hmm. but win the war. Exactly. Does that make sense? Yeah. And win the war is staying yeah. like this the rest of your life, yes. you know? So for people that don't know you, can you tell me your, how they can find out more about you? What is your Instagram handle? Uh, my Instagram is at Jade Marvel. Um, it's a name I made up for myself when I was gonna become famous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you can find me there. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Jessica Lorraine Alvalar. Um, yeah, and just follow me. I'm still posting about the camp. You know, I'm, every, I'm there almost every day. Uh, still working on my fitness goals as well as trying to help others with theirs. Wow, you, you, if you're not inspired by this story, then I don't know, I don't know. You know, if you need to lose weight, you need to figure out what you're gonna do. Make a commitment, go all in, and get ready for a change. Jessica, thank you so much for being thank on the show. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you, God bless you. I'm very proud of you. Thank you.